use the F table to find the critical value for the given scenario. So we have some sample data, we have a claim, and we have a significance level. These are the steps to find a critical value for an F test. When you're running a hypothesis test to compare two population variances, you're conducting an F test. In order to determine the critical value, you have to use the following three steps. So I've written them out for us so you can take notes on them as we do the problem. But basically here's what we're going to do. We're going to determine the number of tails in alpha, right, for the problem. And then if the problem happens to be a two-tail test, we're going to divide that alpha by two. So when you look at this problem, it's easy to see that alpha is 0.01. They've spelled that out for us. And we're also told here the claim. The claim is that um, this ratio is greater than one. The important thing about this is this greater than symbol indicates a right-tailed test or a one-tailed test. Because of that, we do not have to divide alpha by anything. We keep alpha as it is, and that's the alpha we'll use for the problem. So now we come to step two, and it says determine the table to use by considering alpha from step one. So the tables are actually, we have a separate table for every alpha. So if we know our alpha is 0.01, then we're going to go to the 0.01 table. And what we're going to go to the table with is we're going to go there armed with our sample sizes here. And basically what we have to do though is be careful about which one we're going to use as the numerator degrees of freedom and which one we're going to use as the denominator degrees of freedom. So this might be new notation for you, a new language for you. We never had something called a numerator degree of freedom. Well, this problem has a fraction in it, right? It has a ratio. And that ratio is essentially going to help us determine what's the numerator and what's the denominator. So the fact that we have the second population on top, it means that we will use this guy here as our numerator degrees of freedom. Of course, we're going to take one away from it like we normally do. So the degree of freedom here is going to be 24. So we'll say the degree of freedom for this population is 24, or for this sample, right? The degrees of freedom for this one is going to be 13. And that will be our denominator degrees of freedom because the first population, right, is going to be the denominator degrees of freedom. You will see them do this whenever they have a larger sample variance for the second population. Otherwise, of course, the first population is usually the numerator, but not if the second population has a larger sample variance. So the rule is very simple. If the larger sample variance is contained in the second population, you put that one on top. If it's contained in the first population, you put the first population value on top. So in other words, when you see this expression here, it'll be written according to these sample values here, because that's how we want to run our hypothesis test for a very specific reason related to the F-test. The F-test um, must be set up in a ratio that's going to form a value that's greater than 1 when you calculate the test statistic. It's just how our tables are set up in the back of the books. So because of that, we make sure that when we set up our test statistic, we put the larger sample variance on top. So because of that, if the larger sample variance is from sample 2, they will go ahead and make that your numerator. And then for the denominator will be the other sample. Okay, so basically what we're going to say here is we're going to go to the table now. We're going to look at it using the numerator degrees of freedom as 24 and the denominator degrees of freedom as 13. So essentially what we're going to go look up on the table is this. We're going to be looking for an F value that has 0 0.01 as the alpha. We're going to be looking for degrees of freedom 24 and 13. 24 being the degrees of freedom that will be found on the row on top of the table. And then we're going to look at 13 on the left column of the table. So that's basically what we're going to do as we go there now. Okay, so let's go look at this table for the first time. And we'll go look at these numbers on the 0.01 table. And we'll find our F value for the table. Okay, so we're on the 0.01 F distribution table, and we're trying to find numerators degrees of freedom 24 and denominator degrees of freedom 13. Now you can see this first page doesn't have 24 from the numerator, so we're going to go to the next page of the table. The next page of the table has 24 degrees of freedom for the numerator, and for the denominator we need to go down to where it says 13, so we'll find down here the value 3.59. 3.59. 